late 2021 December, uh, Plateau State complained very seriously about the change in name and communities where Fulani headsmen changed the ancestral names of the indigenous people and made those communities theirs, technically speaking. Early 2022, uh, January, in a community in Edo State, Okada area actually, uh, some of the community members cried out in suburbs how Fulani headsmen gave them a strong warning over the issue of their farms and how the produce belongs to them. The day they revolt, they go down. As we speak, Enugu's turn is right now is what we are facing. Before we go into the news proper, to find out exactly what is going on in Enugu and why people are running, we like you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button beside it. You see a bell notification icon. Please go ahead, click on it to get notified as soon as you update our channel on YouTube. Let us go straight into the news of the day. Mm. According to the news, headsmen on Wednesday sacked five village farm settlement in Mbuju Autonomous Community, Ehamufu, Isuzo, local government area of Enugu State, bringing down five persons, including children and women. This came briefly five days after three members of the state neighborhood watch were brought down while pursuing kidnappers to rescue the wife an 11-year-old daughter of Dr. Eugene Edioga, younger brother of the Enugu State Commissioner for Environment, Chijoke Edioga, that were abducted on January 1st, 2022. Our correspondent who visited Umbuji community, that's on Wednesday, reported that people carrying their belongings were seen running into the town from the troubled settlement. At the residence of Chief Eric Ebe, one of the stakeholders in the town, over 50 women and children who reportedly escaped from the troubled farm settlement were seen in the compound. Ebe, in an interview with our correspondent, described the invasion of his community as horrific and unwarranted. He said, since January 1st, 2022, no fewer than 10 persons have been brought down in his community, while many others were kidnapped for ransom. A community leader, Chief Moses Olinya, lamented that more than 24 hours after security agencies were informed of the inversion and carnage done, they were yet to see any secur security personnel, mm. according to him. The suspect invaded the community around 10 a.m. Some displaced women who spoke to our correspondent appealed to the government to come to their aid. When contacted on telephone, the state police public relations officer Daniel Ndukwe did not take his calls. Fear groups in the community. Hetzman kidnapped seven holiday residents. As of the time of filing this report, he had not responded to a text sent to him. Meanwhile, the chairman of Isuzo local government area, Jacob Aboyi, Aboyi confirmed the inversion, describing the frequent moves against Mbuji community as unacceptable. Aboyi said, and I quote, When I got the information on Tuesday, I contacted the police, but the divisional police officer's phone number was switched off and I immediately called the military. About five days ago, we were battling with kidnapping in the same Mbuji when the wife and daughter of Eugene Edioga were kidnapped and they were just released on Monday. So, I called the military and we were, we were ready this morning including, including the neighborhood watch and forest guard. Unfortunately, the soldiers that were already at Ikem said they got a call from another emergency from Uzowani and they decided to turn back and they have not returned. That is the situation. But our local security neighborhood watch and forest guards are doing everything possible to calm the situation. Mm. My God. This is becoming one too many. It's becoming regular. 
when that ha when this happened in an Edo state, I think somewhere in Okada, people were saying that uh, this. And I said, no, injustice to one is injustice to all. We need to rise, as in we need to take security as our personal thing. Okay, I think it's about time. While they talk about security, uh, uh, forest guard, and the uh, neighborhood watch, I think they should also look at having a um, community vigilantes bring them up and see how they can do something about it. it's becoming too rampant any place where there is a um, community um suburbs where there's farmlands you find these guys invading that place and trying to take charge over those community farms barely 24 hours ago the president assured nigerians that they can they should go into farms and that the security personnel are working to turn to see that um Nigerians are secured and they have no other option but to go into farming because that's the that's the job, so to speak, you know, that can change the turn touch turn around the situation, economic situation of Nigerians. Fast forward to now in Enugu State, they're going through this. Let's be real to ourselves. The military cannot do everything for us. How many military do we have in Nigeria to protect and get over two hundred million Nigerians? Do the maths, do the calculation. How many police officers do we have to safeguard both the city and the suburbs and the whole of Nigerian community, the whole of Nigerian cities at the same time? You do the mathematics. Now, if you want to be real to yourself, you can be covering the whole of a particular section and they're invading the, another section of the community. By the time you run down there, they're invading. So Nigerians need to begin to take security as their personal motto and do something about it. This is rather sad. If not for the fact that the, the commissioner's um, uh, relative was involved, maybe you would have been one of those things too many. Now, women seeing that the situation is getting out of hand are beginning to leave. Now, you now understand, technically speaking, when uh, the, the Eastern people, South Eastern, has decided to have something like ESN, you know, you one would ask now, where is the Bobago? Yes, the Bobago Watch was there, the Forest Guard were there. But Ibago would have added to the number, maybe changed a little bit of the narrative. They're trying their best, but we need more. We have to do more. And this uh, neighborhood watch, uh, security guards and all that, they need to be equipped to face what is at, at, at hand at stake. And, you know, people are still holidaying. Technically speaking, they're not yet, you know, they've not entered the full year fully with the economic situations coming on on full blast. Right now, they're still holidaying. With this kind of news, if, it's, if you know the news very well, you will understand and be, agree with me that December periods, festive periods, they travel often back home. Imagine going back to your village and just about while you're trying to you know, enjoy yourself you know, during Christmas and just see invaders come into your community and pick one or two of your relatives. That festive period becomes sorrowful. This needs to stop and something needs to be done urgently. Let's meet in a conversation. Do you have any contrary, any suggestion that can bring this to its bearing?